Uh, Rabotai, we have something from the Havet Haim today. I'm doing this at Saha Albert S. This is a great guy. Hashem, he's doing great work in the in the community. Um, um, so Bezal Hashem, look, he asked me three minutes. He asked me for a three minute derush. So this is what's gonna be. You ready? Like this. Havet Haim says in Torah Tabayit. So Havet Haim says in Torah Tabayit. What's the pshat? What's the pshat? It says by Torah. When it speaks about Torah, it says. What does it say? Okay, so let's go to the next page. So let's go to the next page. Let's go to the next page. Let's go to the next that's what it says. Everything Torah, Torah, Torah. What's the pshat? What is the pshat? What is the pshat over here? So now he writes, this is Havetz Haim in Torah Tabayit. He says, he says, Hashem is a loving father. And he knows what's the greatest reward. He knows. He's in Shamayim. He's after 120. He, there's a big payout. After 120 years, there's a very big payout. There's a big, big schar, a big paycheck. And, and Hashem wants to give you the biggest paycheck possible. And he says, my, my dear kids, I know what's the greatest paycheck ever. And therefore, I'm telling you, learn Torah. What does it say? You're sleeping, learn Torah. You're meaning to say right before you go to sleep. You wake up, we learn Torah. You're walking away, learn Torah. And when he's sitting on the Shulchan, it says very important to say the Torah. Why? He says, because Hashem wants to give us so much reward. And he says, I know the schar in Shemaim. I know the big payout. The big payout is Torah. The big payout is Torah. It says, it says, even it says, it says the Gemara. You know what Gemara says? The the olam yim kol kol he he says it's worth it for a person to sell everything he has to get what to get a, a, a son-in-law tamid hacham. It's worth it to sell everything that you have to get a daughter of a tamid hacham. He says, what's going on over here? He says because the payout is a billion times more. You know, a guy owns a hundred buildings in Manhattan. How, how much is that? A hundred buildings of Manhattan. The guy's a billionaire. And now you have a big Tamil Hakam. He wants to marry your daughter but on one condition. Listen, uh, I need, uh, I, I, you know, I have a, another Shidduch, I have another Shidduch. This is what they offer me. You offer more, I'll take you. Is it worth it? It's worth it. Why? Because the payout is great. You know, they say, Rabbi Ghazban Ya'i was his father in law of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. It says in Shamayim, in, 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 in Shamayim, the father in law of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's father in law is getting Hana, is getting pleasure from the Torah that his son in law is learning. You hear what's going on over it? This is Zohar says this. You hear what's going on over it? Because Torah is the biggest payout. Talmud Torah can Kulam. The Rambam, even the Rambam says. The Rambam says, what does it say over there? The Rambam says that if you if you if you put all the mitzvot on one side, you put the mitzvah of Torah on another side, what outweighs Torah? Torah outweighs. How many times it says Gedola? Gedola, you tell me bin It says, I remember one time we had a we had a kailum. This is what we did. This was many years ago. After Yom Kippur, right after Yom Kippur, we, we, we were Bachar, we were single guys. We made a kolel, single guy kolel, that right after Yom Kippur, everybody sits and learns. So, 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 so somebody came up to me and said, how are you going to do that? Right after Kippur, are you going to do that? He says, don't worry about it. Sit and learn. So, so, so someone says, why are you doing that? So he says, why are you doing that? He says, first of all, I'm giving everybody some busag, borekas, they can have lemonade, I'm bringing everything to them. All they have to do, I'm bringing everything to them. They're going to have a table. They're going to be able to eat. They're going to have some, some boosak, some kibbeh, some whatever they have that. Right there, they're going to have everything. He says, why are you doing that? I said, I'll explain you why. Because it says, in the time Beit HaMikdash is going to come, there's two ways. One of the ways is that we're going to actually build the Beit HaMikdash. So if we go and build the Beit HaMikdash, what's going to happen is, we're going to go ahead. It says, we're going to stop the learning. We're going to build the Beit HaMikdash. Even though it says, Dola Talmud Yotemi Bini Beit HaMikdash. However, except one group. You know which group is going to continue learning? Which group? The children. You know why? Because the children, Talmud Torah, when they learn, it's so pure, there's no sin. It's, it's kokuloi Torah, it's so kadosh. When a child, there's no sin. You have a 10-year-old kid, he's learning, steiging, uh, he's going, steiging, steiging. You know how pure what's coming out of his mouth, the Torah is so pure. 
So I told the single guys, what happens Yom Kippur? Our neshamot is super washed. We have a, a, a super wash cleansing. Our neshama is so pure. Now what's the first thing we're going to do? With our pure neshama, you learn Torah, it's the highest level you can do. It's the highest level you can do, so pure. And that's what we did. We sat there, 10 guys sitting down and learning. I gave them, well, everybody had, 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 had something to eat. They had a, a plate. We gave them a plate. We, they, they sat the and they learned for an hour right after. Why? Because it's pure Torah. There's even a, a memory chazal that a person should do tshuva right before he learns Torah. Hashem, please forgive me for any sins that I did. I'll never do any sin again in life. I'm starting off strong. I'm starting off strong. So like, hey, you, you, you're coming through Torah. You're learning Torah through tshuva. You're coming through the most holy, holiest things. And there's one thing you have to know. The person has to know that it's all the siyad deshmaya. You need siyad deshmaya in the learning. How do I know? We say every every time we start learning, yihi ratzon. It's kafchetem with bed mesecha barachot. It says over there, there's a tefillah, and it's a halakha and shukhan aruch. That what? There's a tefillah, we say, Yira tzom nera, shaloi, shaloi yira devar tekali, velo kasher dvar tekali, velo kasher dvar tekali, we pray to Hashem, don't let us mess up in our Torah, let our Torah be uh, understandable well. And at the end we say, Ki Hashem yitein chokhmah mi piv da dudunah. Ki Adonai yitein chokhmah mi piv da dudunah. Gal and I v'abit l'nroh dekha. We're saying, Hashem, open up our eyes. You know the Rochez Kalbramski says, what's harder, to be a billionaire in this world? Or to understand the Tosafot. What was harder? To be a Rokhaz Kabramsky, yeah? What's harder? To be a billionaire in this world? Or to understand the Tosafot? He says, to understand the Tosafot. He says, why? Why? He says, because to be a billionaire in this world, all you have to do is what? Do a little bit maneuvering. Oh, this has an idea. that I, Look at Uber. One second, he had an idea. The guy's a billionaire. Think about it. One idea, Roman, yeah? One idea, the guy's a billionaire. What? What happened? Billionaire. How'd it happen like that? It's a, it's a, it's a wild thing. In, in one second, Hashem can give you one idea, do this idea, the next day you, 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 you maneuver, you become a billionaire overnight. But to Safot, you're dealing with spiritual worlds. You're dealing with spirituality. You're changing Olamot. You're changing the worlds up there in Shamaim. It's not a joke. You want to understand that? Oh, then already it's a whole different world. It's a whole different world. And that's why we know how did Rashi Kadosh come about? How did the Ramah come about? What happened was, we, we had Rashi's Yorzah yesterday, yeah? You know what happened over there? Everybody knows the famous story of Rashi. Everybody knows. What happened? His father was a jeweler. And his father was one time in a ship on a boat. And he was holding a very big expensive jewel, millions of dollars, and he had it. And the king had advisors on that boat and says, listen, this guy's a jeweler, he has a very big jewel, go get it for him. And what happened was, he said, we know you have this, we'll pay you any price. What are you doing with it? Oh, the king's going to put in his uh, avodah zarah, in his idol. Oh, no, 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 I don't have it. He says, no, we're going to check you, we know you have it. Check whatever you want. And they're checking the bags and doing everything like that. And he had it in his hand, in his pocket. And what he did before they checked his pocket, he threw it off the ship. He threw a million dollar diamond off the ship. Could you do that? Would you do that? Think about it. Imagine throwing a million dollars. Right? Rashi's father said, no, 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 no. Now for Abu that night what happened was in Shamaim, they decreed on him what's going to be. Just like you stopped a jewel to shine in Abu Zarah, you'll get a sun that's going to shine the Jewish world with Torah. Because nothing goes, goes, goes to waste. When you do big things, HaKadosh Baruch says, listen, you did something great, don't worry, we're going to reward you for that. And the same thing with the Ramah, everybody knows the famous story of Ramah Shesalis. What happened with Ramah Shesalis? What happened was, he had a minag that what? His minhag was that by Hatzot, midday, he would stop by, by Hatzot of, of, of Erev Shabbat. Shabbat was coming, he had a minag, by midday, he would stop work. And what happened was, there was one time, a princess that she walked in, a very, very, uh, the, the, the queen's daughter, was unbelievable uh, uh, wealth that they had, and they're buying from the store a little t- tapestry and this and curtains and this and that. Says, listen, I'm closing in, t- in a half hour, so please bring everything to the register. What happened was, she says, you know who I am? And when it came a half hour later, he says, you know who I am? He says, of course I know who you are, you're the princess. He says, yes. And if you don't give me my time that I need, I'm telling you now, I'm walking out, I'm not buying anything. And it was the biggest deal that he could have buy. And guess what? He says, listen, in, in 15 minutes, I'm closing my store. And then 15 minutes later came and he says, listen, you're going to give me, I need more time, I need another hour or two. He says, listen, I have to get ready for Shabbat. This is my minhag I'm always doing. He says, listen, if you do that, I'm not buying anything. He says, I'm sorry. 
this is what I have to do. She walked out, she didn't buy anything that night. He had a dream, and the dream, what happened? They said in Shemaim, you could have a choice of extreme wealth, or a son that's going to be Tamil Acham, and that's going to light up the, light up the world. What is it? He picked Ramah Shislis, and he got his son, Ramah. Ramah came, Ashkenazim, follow his Psaq. Ramah, you hear what's going on with Shislis? What? Tur is our life. Tur is our Chaim. Tur is everything that we have. And therefore, if you look in this week's parasha, what does it speak about? What's the biggest? It's Shabbat Chazon this week, right? Yes or no? It's Shabbat Chazon. And what is the bracha in Devarim? Yosef and the Chem El Famim. Hashem is giving one of the biggest brach, brachot. You're going to be, uh, you're going to have bracha, bracha, bracha. What's going on over here? So much bracha. What's happening over here? And, and, and the answer is very, very simple. When Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, he was going, he wanted to visit uh, uh, Vespasius, right? That was his name? Vespasius? Right? He wanted to visit him. How did he, how did he do it? He was able to make, the Baryonim was in charge of, of Yerushalayim. They weren't letting them out. So he made believe that he was dead. And then they took his coffin out. He was able to get out of, the, out of, out of Yerushalayim, meet the Roman Emperor Vespasius. And he says, oh my dear king. He says, you call me a king? I'm not a king. I'm just the Roman Emperor. He says, no, you're going to be king. And at that moment, they came to him and they said, the king died. And Vespasius, you're taking over. He says, Wow. You had such a, a, a prophecy, whatever you want, I'm going to give you. And what does he say? What was the three things he said? He said one was Rabbi Tzadok, help Rabbi Tzadok, right? Second thing is Rabbi Gamliel's family from David and Melech. And the, third, the, the first one was really what? Save Yavna Vechamea. I ask you a question. Shouldn't it be Beit HaMikdash? Shouldn't it be Beit HaMikdash? What happened over here? Why is he speaking about Yavne Chachamea? You know why? Because he understood. What did he understand? He understood that what? The Beit HaMikdash is stationary. It's right. It's the biggest loss that we have, the Beit HaMikdash. But what? If we don't have Torah in our lives, then we really have zero. Because that's our life. And therefore, even if a person is in Canada or in, in any place in the world, if he has the Torah with him, He'll always be saved. And therefore, he says, Rabbi Zakai says, listen, you can't destroy the Torah. The Chachamim and the Yavanim in, 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 in Yavne, save them. Because he understood, with Torah, we still have a chance to survive. Because even if he would attack Jerusalem and kick everybody out and just keep the Beit HaMikdash, without Torah, we're nothing. Without Torah, we have no life. Since I need the Torah to stay alive, because wherever we are, we'll still have Torah. We'll always still be connected to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Of course, we want the Beit Hamikdash, and without the Beit Hamikdash, a lot of bracha is lost in the world. A lot of bracha is lost in the world. But without Torah, we have no life. There's no life. Like it says, "Kiem This is our life. And we all know the famous story of Rabbi Ben Leibowitz. When the one time there was a rub, and he says, with, Torah is like, is like breathing. Without air, we can't breathe. Without oxygen, we can't breathe. And he got up and he got very upset. He says, no. Torah is more than that. Torah is life itself. Yeah, you need air to breathe in order to live. But Torah is life itself. And that's exactly what Rabbi Yonah Zakai was doing. We need the life itself. And that's why right before, right before Tisha B'Av was saying that what's Tisha B'Av? It's Karai Alay Moed. It's a Moed. Why is it a Moed? So everybody says, why is it Moed? Because that time, right, it's, it, we're going to have a holiday. It's going to be eventually a holiday. But even now, it's a holiday because we have the Torah still. We have existence of the Torah. Yes, we lost Beit Midash. A lot of bracha is lost. A lot of connection to HaKadosh Baruch was lost. But the biggest connection that we have is through HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Torah. And that's what it say. And no HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ela, Dala Mocha La Lacha, the Torah. This we have. And this is, our, this is the bracha that we're doing right before. We say, Hashem Elchem, Yosef Elchem, El Pamim. What is he adding in? He's adding in the fact that we have Torah. Once we have Torah in our lives, we're able to connect to HaKadosh Baruch Hu more and more.